वेलकम टू दर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ अवर सीरीज द मदर अर्थ इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द कंपोजिशनल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द सोलर सिस्टम इन एपिसोड टू वी लर्न हाउ द केमिकल एलिमेंट्स फेमिलियर टू अस फ्रॉम द अर्थ मटीरियल्स ओरिजिनेटेड इन स्टेलर इंटीरियर्स थ्रू न्यूक्लियोसिंथिस और फ्यूजन रिएक्शंस in the course of massive stars at each stage of these fusion reactions hydrogen and helium participated as fuel elements which is one of the chief reasons why nucleides of elements with even atomic number z and even number of neutrons n that is with even mass numbers a are more stable and abundant than those with odd a let's look at the critical fusion reactions of gaseous oxygen in which three non metallic elements like silicon sulfur and phosphorus are manufactured in each of these reactions hydrogen and helium are either added or are expelled when the resulting nucleide has an even a or even z it is more stable phosphorus has neither even a nor even z so being far less stable it is also far less abundant than silicon or sulfur why is aluminum with a even a far less abundant than silicon which is adjacently placed in the periodic table because it has odd z and odd n similarly nitrogen has even a but with odd z and odd n it has lower abundance compared to oxygen and carbon thus all such elements like nitrogen boron lithium which have even a but have odd z and odd n are less abundant than elements with even z like carbon and oxygen in another example neon which is a gas with even a and even z when fusing with helium produces the metallic element magnesium with even z it is equal to 12 in similar fusion reactions with magnesium the nucleides of silicon are produced further fusion with helium the successive elements till the peak iron group elements chiefly iron and nickel are reached which have the maximum stability and abundance in the stellar cores elements with oddness of either z or a like potassium and sodium are less stable than those with even a and z like calcium and are consequently less abundant we have learnt that the abundance of elements depends on what it essentially depends upon the stability of the nucleide stable the nucleide more abundant would be the element nucleides with even z and even n also have a high binding energy and so provide a more stable nuclear structure amongst them nucleides which have equal z and n are considerably more stable like that of sodium but this kind of stability gradually declines 
beyond the element calcium with increasing Z beyond 20. It is because the elements with Z lower than 20 require lower temperature and pressure conditions in the stellar cores. This unique feature of equal N and Z is also referred to as symmetry in the nucleus. And the rule for it, that is N by Z equal to 1, is referred to as the symmetry rule. Nucleides of elements like titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, which are produced before the peak of Fe, do not have this symmetry. This explains also why with further increase in the binding energy, the peak abundance is reached for exothermic fusion reactions at iron 56. This is reflected well when the abundance of all elements is plotted on a logarithmic scale against their increasing atomic numbers. It reveals a sawtooth curve showing high and low abundances for elements with even and odd Z. One doesn't obtain a smooth curve. This pattern was postulated first in 1914 by an Italian nuclear chemist, Giuseppe Oddo, and was reiterated again by an American nuclear chemist, William Draper Hawkins, in 1917. Since then, it is referred to as the Otto Hawkins pattern of abundances of elements and as the Otto Hawkins law. Although the fusion reactions till the peak temperature are all exothermic, the kinetic energy released through the hydrogen burning to helium, as in the case of the sun, is much higher than that released at successive fusion stage in massive stars. The additional kinetic energy, that is temperature, needed in successive reactions is accomplished through repeated process of gravity collapse, contraction and expansion in the stellar core. An invaluable contribution about such physical changes during stellar evolution was made by the Indian astrophysicist Meghnath Saha in 1920. While stellar nucleosynthesis was still a speculation, Saha developed a mathematical equation relating the successive stages to their accurate temperatures. Besides resolving further the stellar nucleosynthesis, these equations characterized those stars that would evolve as supernova in the next few million years. The thermonuclear reactions in the late stages of stellar evolution were made even clearer and more understandable by another Indian physicist, Subramanian Chandrasekhar, in 1930. He won the Nobel Prize. He explained how the less massive stars also eventually transform into white dwarfs, just as the supernova transforms into black holes through repeated colossal and speedy gravitational collapse. Eventually, it became obvious that in addition to the elements up to mass number 56, the supernova explosions also co-generate nuclei with still higher mass numbers 
it is atomic mass like copper zinc molybdenum tin lead which are more familiar to us because they form economic deposits in the earth's crust accessible to us also produced are the group of rare earth elements or the rae with z varying from 57 to 71 and the radioactive elements like uranium thorium these heavy elements with mass numbers exceeding 56 are produced through a process referred to as rapid neutron capture in this process a neutron gets converted into proton and the element with higher mass number is produced we will look into more detail about this process of neutron capture in the next episode we have learned in this episode about the stability factors that have governed the abundance of nucleides of elements from the spectral observations of the compositions of the sun the nearby stars the planets and the meteorites the composition of the solar system was estimated its following compositional characteristics connect the origin of the solar system with the thermonuclear reactions in the stellar cores and the supernova explosion that happened in our galaxy the milky way what are those compositional characteristics number 1 the iron group elements with z 51 to 58 approaching the peak binding energy show the maximum abundance at fe with mass number 56 number 2 besides the overwhelming abundance of hydrogen and helium elements with either lower or higher a than that of fe are distinctly less abundant number 3 elements with even even neutrons and protons are far more abundant compared to those with oddness of either z or n number 4 their abundance pattern always yields a contrasting and alternating sorted curve following the odo harkins rule number 5 elements with z lower than 20 that is hydrogen helium carbon nitrogen oxygen neon sodium potassium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus and sulfur are prominently represented in the composition in the next episode we will look into the phenomenon of radioactivity of elements besides looking at the ages of oldest meteorites and eventually the age of the solar system thank you